Hi, everybody. This is God Sad for the Sad Truth. This is a story that I uh, weighed in on uh, several days ago on my social media, but I thought that I would uh, produce a quick Sad Truth clip here with. So this is published in the New York Times on May 26th, and the title of the uh, article is Reparations Happy Hour Invites White People to pay for drinks. So as you probably know, there's this movement for reparations uh, to the uh, black community in the United States because of uh, the history of slavery. Uh, some people think it's a great idea. Some people think it's a dreadful idea. Uh, and in this case, uh, the, the issue is, well, we can maybe make some small micro uh, uh, offerings to atone for collective guilt. Uh, if uh, That is if you're white. And one of the ways you can do that is you can pay for people of color uh, happy hour. I'm not joking. So here we go. This is, of course, in Portland. Where else would it be? Portland, uh, Oregon. So reparations happy hour, which was held in Portland, Oregon, invited black, brown, and indigenous people to a bar and gave them $10, $10 bills as they arrived. The event was mostly funded by white people who were asked not to attend. Uh, does this remind you of uh, uh, Evergreen State College where whites were asked to not attend campus? So progressive, so liberal. So in Portland, Oregon, organizers of the Reparation Happy Hour invited black, brown, and indigenous people to a bar and handed them $10 bills as they arrived a small but symbolic gift mostly funded by white people who were asked not to attend. Brown Hope, a local activist organization, wanted the event, which was held on Monday, to be a space for people of color in a mostly white city to meet one another, discuss policy issues, and plan potential action. While it was far from the full-scale reparations sought by some as penance for the horrors of slavery and continuing racial injustice, Cameron Witten, the 27-year-old activist who organized the event, said that there was one similarity. It made attendees feel as if their pain were valued and understood. It was only $10, but when I saw them, I saw their lights light up, he said. What I saw there was that people felt like they were finally seen. And then there's a, a copy of his tweet here. People of color are powerful in capitalized letter uh, letters. Amazing turnout at Brown Hope's inaugural Reparations Happy Hour event. Mr. Witten said he hoped the event, in addition to building community, would call attention to reparations, the concept that black people should be financially compensated for the generations of trauma that preceded them. Uh, I won't read you the rest, but I'll, I'll put a link to the article. So I decided to uh, weigh in on that this was uh, on May 31st so I suggested that the following additional events be held so upcoming events I'm reading now from my uh, Twitter feed upcoming events to pay for reparations to people of color Mondays white people grant full access to their cars whites must walk Tuesdays <laughs> white people grant full sexual access of their white spouses Wednesdays, white people grant a one-hour open access to their bank accounts. So for one hour, you've got to allow people of color to access your bank account as they see fit. Thursdays, white people sleep in the streets whilst people of color move in their homes. Fridays, all restaurant bills are paid by whites. Whites, whites must fast for 24 hours to atone for their white privilege. So if you know anything about Judaism, the highest holiday is Yom Kippur. This is where you, f you literally fast for a bit more than 24 hours, precisely because you are atoning, in a sense, for your collective guilt. And I say collective guilt because I had once asked my uh, rabbi friend, uh, you know, why is it that we have to atone for transgressions that we ourselves might not have committed as individuals? And he had answered that, well, but as this Jewish people, once you are, you know, you're in a sense atoning for what some of your Jewish uh, brothers and sisters might have done, which I thought struck me as a rather unsavory idea. And so here you have to uh, fast to atone for your white uh, guilt. Saturdays, bowling lanes are paid by whites. 
Sundays, only people of color are allowed outdoors. <laughs> Whites must remain indoors as a symbolic gesture of their inner shame. And then I write, good night, the West, good run. It, it simply is amazing that we live in a zeitgeist that allows for such ideas to be uh, fully acceptable. And I don't mean allow in a in a legal sense. Of course, you're allowed to say any idiotic thing that you want. So I don't mean it in a, you know, a legal disallow somebody from saying this stupidity. But that he actually, this gentleman, feels perfectly emboldened, perfectly empowered. He thinks that history is on his side to say, hey, random white people who have nothing to do with what might have happened to people who are darker than you 300 years ago. And I will pay to darker people than me today for things that happened 200 years ago. And I had nothing to do with those issues. And neither did you, the recipient of my altruism. But the argument that the, quote, people of color will give is that, you know, the 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 trauma is somehow passed down the generations through a Lamarckian process. For those of you who know anything about evolutionary theory, uh, somehow it would seem that the the trauma has been uh, somehow epigenetically coded, so that even though the current black person may not be suffering under slavery, it has somehow been passed on to him or her. And if that's not a good enough argument, since most people don't know you know, Lamarckian inheritance, then they'll simply say, oh, but you're still benefiting, maybe not from slavery, but from the white oppressive system. We still live in a white privileged world, and therefore you do owe me. By you being white today and having benefited from the white privilege that today you benefit from, then you owe me. What is classical liberalism? What's the foundational tenet of classical liberalism? Judge people as individuals right? Think about it for a second. Uh, so I'm from Lebanon. I guess I'm a person of color. Do I head off to receive a free drink uh, because I've been oppressed? But incidentally, I've certainly have suffered extraordinarily greater oppression within my lifetime than almost anybody who probably went to that ha happy hour because I escaped execution in Lebanon. Should I ask for collective reparations from every a person who shares the religion of those who try to separate our bodies from our heads? Or would that seem as rather an execrable and grotesque idea? Hashtag not all. So hashtag not all applies to when, you know, noble immigrants uh, commit something. Well, we shouldn't blame all immigrants. We shouldn't have a blanket statement. But when it comes to the white devil then even though you've got nothing to do with what happened to uh, other folks 300 years ago, you are guilty by virtue of your lighter skin you. It is almost impossible to imagine anything more grotesque and antithetical to what any true classically liberal person would think. It's grotesque and you should speak out against it. Cheers, everybody. Tomorrow I'm heading off to Philadelphia to participate in a panel discussion on, uh, well, I'll maybe weigh in on, on the topic once I return from Philadelphia. It's the Marketing Science Conference taking place at Temple University. Cheers, everybody.